morning. My name is General Jeff. I'm a Skid Row community activist and I'm for the Skid Row community and I'm also on the board of directors for the Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. Today I'm with, doc with Dr. Diane Woods, who's come all the way out from San Bernardino. She works for the African American Health Institute of San Bernardino County. Thank you. In the report there was the expression of the dichotomous view of the developers, the land developers, and uh, their perspective of a community, and then the community's perspective of what they felt was important and what they wanted to have within their community. That was an expression of themselves, their art, their creativity, their music, um, their family life and gatherings. Because African Americans are people of, of, uh, of community and, and, and connection, between those things in our community, what's important to us, such as our family uh, gatherings, um, our um, spiritual connections, um, the building up of our community through businesses, small businesses, you know, all of those things that are important to us, not just the brick, the mortar, a building, a unit, a house, and someone having something to eat. There's more to life than having just a roof over your head. And the other thing too is how does that house look? I mean, as a people, we're not accustomed to just living in small quarters. We have families, so we have yards. We have outdoor gathering places, parks where we can play ball, where we can interact and, and um, be close to each other. So those are the types of things that people had expressed in the poverty report that I thought was quite fascinating. I know you mentioned Native Americans. Do you feel yes. like Skid Row in certain areas where Hispanics are like being on a reservation that you can't get off and you can't control? I do look at that because you have the 50 blocks and there are invisible lines there, you know. Um, so within those 50 blocks, you may find that there are no grocery stores. You may find that there are no um, shopping malls where you would have the competitive pricing, et cetera, et cetera. You may find in some places that there are, are not areas where trash is being removed. Some of those things that are in more developed neighborhoods, you have a routine day when the trash man comes and picks up the trash. You can get in a car and drive to a grocery store. That's usually within a, a block or maybe a half a mile of where one lives. But when you look at that grocery store, you have variety. You don't have that here in Skid Row. So then one is very restricted as to what one can do. And then the other aspect is you have the developers that have come in and they've created these um, million, a half million dollar apartments, you know, that only certain uh, people with certain income levels can afford. Whereas individuals who have no income or very limited income um, can only live in a very small, um, residential quarters. So it, you maintain that disparity, you maintain that disconnect, and it's almost like in this little area, this is where you're going to stay, you have a limited public transportation. And I think I also read that where there are shuttle uh, buses that easily transport people from one point to another in surrounding neighborhoods, you don't have that here in Skid Row, I believe. So, you know, you find some very limiting types of experiences here for residents who are in this location. Thank you, Dr. Woods, for adding on to, to with such eloquent words in terms of letting the people know exactly what we're doing and the positive things of what we're doing in our community. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Woods, for coming.